This is a season of revival. And I was telling the people in the course of the week that there are so many things that limit us to connect to revival. I shared so many things. When a church sleeps, when the spirit of slumber comes in and attacks individual and attacks the family and comes to church, then the generals die. That's what I was sharing in the course of the week. That when Cicera the general, the great man, slept, Jair the woman, whom they call the weak vessel, he died. When Saul slept while he was pursuing David, the Bible says David came and cut the edge of his garment. I shared so much about the garment. He took his sword. That is his weapon. You know, disarming you life. He took his bottle of water and David went away on the mountain. And he called the bodyguards and the armies of Saul and told him, You say you're protecting the king. You say you're protecting the king. Where is his sword? Where is his sword? Saul jumped up and stood. The hedge of his arm was cut and says, David was here. The bottle was not there. When the church sleeps, it comes like the days of Eli. The Bible says the word was rare because the sword has been taken. That's why he found comfort and he slept properly. And when he slept, because delay had not come for sex. Delay had come to take away the power of Samson. Because he was looking for the source that supports this man. Where is the source of the family that causes this family to be the family? Where is the source of the church that causes the church not to become a club but becomes a church? Because Jesus says, my house shall be called a house of power. That is a house of prayer. So where there is prayer, there is power. I usually tell people, a prayerless church is a powerless church. Because prayer is a source of revival. And to the family, and to the individual, and to the body of Christ. So Delilah was seeking for the power that Samson uses to destroy all the enemies as one man. Can you imagine? One man kills thousands and thousands. One man is a threat to all the Philistines. One man is causing the king not to settle and saying, what can I do? And that's why they say, delay it go, we shall pay you. Today there is a delay that has been sent in the family. There is a delay that has been sent in the church. And when he comes, he comes to exchange your destiny. Instead of becoming a deliverer, of your people, you become a deliverer of wheat. Because the guy who was supposed to fight for his people, he started grinding. 
Because the eyes were not there, the hair was no longer there. That's why you see today, families are the way they are. Because when they slept, the enemy planted a wrong seed, exchanged the destiny. I gave you the story in First Kings about the two women who all had children, who all had ministries, all who had anointing, all who had talents and gifts. But when they slept, one killed her child. And this one, because she was sleeping, there was an exchange. They brought a dead baby to this other woman and took the living baby. Even when she took the living baby, she did not want that baby alive. When they reached before Solomon, he says, we rather all miss. Let this one die. But because of the wisdom of Solomon, he realized that this baby did not belong to this one. Have they exchanged your destiny? Today what you see in your family is not what you expected. Praise the Lord. I'm doing that for the sake of those who are not there so that they can connect. I don't preach to finish the sermons. I preach to raise somebody. I don't preach to finish, finish, finish. You see, I preached about this, I preached about this, and this, and this. No. I want to minister to a soul. I told the church, once we connect, you know, it was so, you know, there were so much revelations. So by the CDs, I believe they are there. You'll be blessed. But now I'm doing the summary of the conference. The summary of the conference. Once we connect to the source of power, we become power. When this woman of the blood issue touched the hem of Jesus Christ, the Bible says Jesus realized that power had left him. And where had this power gone? Into this woman. Praise the Lord. So once we are connected to the source of power, who is the king of kings? The ability of the king of kings comes in our lives. Then we begin to manifest the character of Jesus. Our lifestyle changes. Our dressing code changes. The way we do things changes. Our language changes. We speak with our mouth full of wisdom. You calculate every word you speak. Because the Bible says in Matthew, be careful the way you speak. Because what you speak is what will bring judgment on you. By your words, you'll be condemned and judged. So if you don't speak with wisdom to your wife, hey, there is somebody waiting for you to give an account of every careless and abusive word you told your wife and you told your husband. They are recorded somewhere. You may think God forgets. God does not forget. The Bible says, the Bible says do not be deceived in Galatians. Don't be deceived. Our God cannot be mocked. Whatever you sow is what you reap. So you will sow in your speech. You will sow in your actions. But at the end of it, there will be a harvest. Praise the Lord. Are we together friends? That's why Matthew, no, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17, verse 19. What does it say? He says, repent therefore and become converted. Where there is no repentance, there is no conversion. You cannot be connected. You will never
never see revival without repentance. God says in Hosea chapter, chapter 5, when read from verse 13, he says, yes, you run here and there seeking for help. You run here and there and you know your weakness and you know your sin. You run here and there, you go to Pastor Benin, you go to Pastor DJ, you know TDJX, you go to, you know, Joyce Ma, you go to Jovret, you go everywhere. He says, I will wait for you. But you will not find healing. You will not find deliverance for your marriage. Healing for your children. Healing for your marriage. He says, actually that one will stir up the anger. Apart from what is causing you to run here and there, I will also come like a young lion. I will tear you. I will increase the pain. I will tear you until you acknowledge your weakness. You acknowledge your offense. And you will seek me with all your heart. That is connection. That's when we see the power of God. That's when we see healing. So here Acts of the Apostles, he says, repent therefore and become converted. That your sins may be brought out so that the time of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. So that the time of refreshing may come from not anywhere. Not from any pastor. Not from any apostle. Not from any evangelist. Not from any prophet. But so that the refreshing, the refreshing of the Lord may come from the Lord. From the presence of the Lord. You get connected. Praise the Lord. You hear David crying in Psalms 85 verse 6. There's something I want to show you. Psalms 85 verse 6. This is the cry of David. He says, will you not revive us again? That your people may rejoice again. What does that mean? Where there is no revival, there is sorrow. There is pain. Praise the Lord. Are we together, friends? Second Chronicles chapter Second Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9. The Bible says, The eyes of the Lord run to and fro through the whole land to show himself strong on behalf of those who had whose heart is loyal to him. God is looking for that heart that is loyal to him. The heart that is connected to him. That's why he says, I have found a man, David, whose heart is after me. Meaning, he will do whatever I instruct him. Even when I'm correcting him, he will listen. Where is your heart? He's looking for the heart that is surely connected to him. Once your heart, listen to me. Once your heart is connected to him, what happens? You no longer live, he lives in you. And when he lives in you, you are hedged with a hedge of fire. You are a frame of fire. You are power walking, power moving, power surrounded, power. Because where there is power, there is revival. Where there is power, there is love. Where there is the power of God, there is freedom of worship. That's why you see today, they say seeing somebody stands like this and looks like this. Then you say, ah, ah, clap your hands because you have seen people not clapping their hands. They look at you and say, let me sit. And then you tell me to stand. She is under rebellious. She's not rebelling against the praise and worship team. She's rebelling against God. Let me show you what I am. I have no reason to worship God. Praise the Lord. Actually, when you have no reason to worship God, what happens? You have already died. <laughs> the devil has already exchanged your destiny. He has given you the dead child. 
Even your destiny, he does not want it for good. He wants to destroy it. He says, kill this baby so that all of us will lose. Are we together, friends? I want us to look at one man in the Bible, in the book of Job, <coughs> chapter 1, from verse 1 to 10. Chapter 1, verse 1 to 10. The Bible says, the book of Job, chapter 1, verse 1 to 10. The Bible says there was one man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job. And that man was blameless and upright. And he feared God and shunned evil. He feared God. He was blameless. He was upright. And because he was upright, he was blameless. He shunned evil. He feared God. When you read verse 8, 9, 10, the Bible says, God had put a hedge of fire around him. A hedge of fire around his children. A hedge of fire around his animals. A hedge of fire around his gardens. A hedge of fire around all his inheritance. And God prospered him. He was successful. But before that, the Bible says, as God was meeting with his children in the angels, the devil showed up. Hallelujah. Then God asked, hey, where are you coming from? He says, I've been moving around to and fro. And God says, have you seen my servant Job? He says, yes, I have seen him. You think he loves you? He loves you because of what you have done for him. Give me permission. Let me go and check him for you. Let me do what? Go and check him for you. God says, you go. But don't touch his soul. His soul is mine. And the time the devil came, what happens? He found an opening on the hedge of fire. How did Job open himself? That's what I want to show you. How did Job open himself? In Job chapter 3, verse 25 and 26. Job chapter 3, verse 25 and 26. He says, for the things I greatly Feared has come to me. And what I dreaded has happened to me. I'm not at ease. Nor am I quiet. I have no rest. For trouble comes. I have no rest. No rest now. The man that was blameless. But because of fear. Has put a crack on the hedge. Fear is not from God. That's what the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. He says, God has not given us the spirit of fear. God has not given us. That's why he says, the things I feared have come to me. The things I dreaded, they have taken place in my life. Now I have no rest. And there is trouble. He realized trouble. But do you see trouble? Have you realized trouble in your family? Have you realized trouble in your marriage? Have you realized trouble in the church? Have you realized trouble? Job realized it. And the devil used that and took advantage to access the family of Job. The Bible says, in a twinkling of an eye, the moment Job put a crack on the hedge, the devil came in, in full swing. In a twinkling of an eye, they said, when your children were beating together, something happened. Before the other one left, another one says, hey, I'm telling you, I've come to tell you that all your animals are destroyed. Within a twinkling of an eye, the Bible says, another one came and says, all your camels, all the servants, all of them, it's only 
me the servant. In a twinkling of an eye. Praise the Lord. That's why he says be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a lowering lion, seeking for whom to devour. Resist him. Many of us, we are failed to resist him. We are angry. We are quarrelsome. We are doubtful. James says, those who doubt, those who are doubtful, they will never receive anything from God because they are like a wind, like the waves in the sea, which is tossed by the wind here, left, here, right, here, the other side. She says, those kind of people can never. And you know, we have killed revival because we are very doubtful. Even when we come to church, we are not expectant. Even when the word is preached, by the time you reach the door, I say, ah, that one I was talking to. I wish Jane was around. I wish Mary was in that conference. Ah, I wish pastor, the senior pastor was around. What about you? God knew it was for you. Why do you send it here and there and there and there to the people who are not there? You are doubtful. He said, those kind of people, that's why we come in the church under the powerful anointing, you go back empty. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 8 to 10. How can you say we are wise? And the law of the Lord is with us. Look, the false pen of the scribe certainly works falsehood. The first pen of the scribe, the intellect. Using your pen. Because you're wiser than any other. That's why they put you in that office. That's why they gave you that post. That's why you are in that ministry of land. That's why you are in that bank. That's why you're a computer wizard. Computer wizard. He says, look. The first pen of the scribe certainly works falsehood. Now it's your pen here. Verse 10. He says, therefore, I will give their wives to other men. Even when you think you have a wife, but God has already ushered this wife to another man. Not the devil. Not the devil. You have opened a crack on the wall of protection, of security, of power. Because of a pen that writes. Even the prophet, even the priest, deals falsely. Even the prophets, it is not me saying. Even the priests deals falsely. Ujanja umeingia madabao. Ujanja umeingia praise and worship team. Ujanja umeingia singers. Ujanja. There cannot be revival. Pastors have become corrupt. They manifest first somewhere in chapter 3. When you read those verses, the verses, the Bible says, because Eddie's family had corrupted themselves. Uh-huh. Corrupted themselves. He says, I'll cut off your family. Nobody will grow to the old age. Even those whom I will leave, leave, they will come to the one whom I have chosen. Even those whom I have left, they will come to that one whom I have chosen. And they will tell him, give us a pulpit. Give us a pulpit. So that we can at least get some food for ourselves. That's what is happening in the church. People preach to get 
If you want healing, come here. Come with 5,000. There is an anointing here. An anointing here. Revive us once again. Give us true ministers. Give us the true word that will take us to a place of connection. Do you know why Peter said that? He says, repent. Repent. So that the time of refreshment can come. He had tested it. He was now carrying revival. He knew what happened in Acts chapter 1. When they spent all their time in the upper room, they were repenting. They were repenting their stupidity. They were repenting of the things they came to Jesus expecting. Looking for positions and only positions. They were repenting. And the Bible says after repentance, they were in one accord. Friends, we need to take the devil where he's not experienced. We need to raise our prayers to another level. To connect and be carriers of revival. Praise the Lord. We need to raise another level of prayer. No, this just but the standard prayer which Jesus raised and the moment he would come he would walk on the water. Which Jesus raised, the moment he would come he says, you young man, raise up. Even when he has been tormented by the demons, but the demons could go. And the Bible says, martyrs and virtues people followed him even to the wilderness. Followed him even to isolated press. Isolated press and he will stay with them three days. That is revival. Nobody's asking for food until Jesus realizes, hey, these guys are hungry. Can we do something? You disciples, can we do something? These guys cannot reach home now. That was a revival. You have the power. To guard that which you have. You have the power to keep it on the high press, in the press of power. Before it bites you. You don't allow it to bite. You guard the anointing. You guard the fire. And you will live and walk in the fire. You keep your altar burning. You surround it with the word of God. You take it to the mountain where it cannot reach you. Praise the Lord. You know serpents can operate some there, there. But when you take it in a high place where it can no longer have a place to fight. It is struggling with life. That's what the ego does. If it wants to buy the snake and kill it, it lifts it from its press of operation. Its press of operation and takes it up. Up! 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 The air changes. Up! The guy is like, it is doing, how can... Then he says, okay, now it is a time. Pa! It hits it. You must charm the charmer before it bites you. Can we stand on our feet?